We're here at the Eagle Airshaft escapeway for the Knox coal mine survivors. And real quick, these are really old telegraph poles that would have had Morse code on them initially and then later telephones for the Lehigh Valley Railroad. I just don't see a lot of these. It's absolutely amazing. These are well over 100 years old. Very cool. So right up here to the right is the former Eagle Air Shaft. And uh, doing all these disasters online, researching, I, I saw a couple with Eagle Shaft, not Air Shaft, but Eagle Shaft. And sure enough, this seems to be the same shaft because he said it was a mile south of Pittston. This is exactly south of Pittston, a mile. And in 1866 and 1871, I don't know if 1871 was the methane explosion, 1866 was the black damp suffocation, but regardless, there was a methane explosion here. Most likely, if this is the uh, same Eagle shaft, which I'm pretty sure it is, there was a black damp suffocation incident here, and there was also a methane explosion that resulted in deaths also, and a fire. So here's a memorial marker, and it's in better condition, it's just ice in it because it's been so cold. It says Eagle Air Shaft, escape shaft for 33 men, Knox Mine Disaster, January 22, 1959. And again, I get this from the Knox documentary via Google search. That is Emmedeo Pancati. Sorry for the name butchery there, buddy. This guy was amazing. Like I said, he climbed out 50 feet vertically, solid rock, up and out of this air shaft, and he alerted rescuers to the plight at hand. Without him, there would be on uh, several dozen more dead. So where that flag is, is where vertically it would have been. You can see up here, this is really neat. This is some old angle iron. And there's an anchor point driven into the old glacial cut rock shelf here. And there's some fencing. I don't know if that was when this was an air shaft. There's another piece of angle iron. And it was abandoned and people, you know, to keep kids from falling in it, they put that there. It could be from the late 1800s or it could just be uh, since the Knox mine disaster before they were going to backfill it. But what's amazing about this is this was supposed to be backfilled. I think back in 1912 or something, it was to be backfilled. And again, luckily for them, it was wide open. He had to clean out a bunch of debris that had collected at the bottom. But he just, he, the guy was 50 years old too. I don't know about you, but I'm only 35. I couldn't climb 50 feet vertical like this. Like, wow, it would have looked probably just like this actually. If you look at this, this gives you an idea what the Eagle Air Shaft, it just, it just dawned on me. This is what it probably would have looked like. Probably more steep. More straight, but not too much difference. I'm just gonna go through my photos real quick. I have a photo of the best quality. But here is miners and onlookers helping a gentleman up. You could just see how steep that is. There's a rope and he's Ascending. That, that's amazing. Now, again, in regards to the industry, the industry was in a massive decline. Massive, massive, massive decline. Even starting in the 20s. Labor strife, strikes, violence, lack of marketing, oil, natural gas. Um, the only uptick that gave the industry life was World War II. And they were mining like crazy in World War II. But if, if you even look on the maps, the production numbers and 
the actual mine maps, what they were actually mining. They are pulling a lot of pillars, so they were robbing coal supports. They are getting all the last of the easy coal out. When you rob pillars, you essentially kill a mine because that causes immediate collapse of roof and workings. So by 1959, this industry was just a shell of its former self. And people still believe the misconception that the mine's all filled with water, and they didn't. Um, you know, some collars took water, but they were able to pump it out. And the federal government came in and pumped out the Knox mine. Sorry for that phone ring. I'm just gonna do this in one take. So, by pumping the water out, they could have returned. Uh, they chose not to, though. That was the end of the industry. Because people had enough. Coal companies made enough. The industry was dead. Everything was in decline, especially by the 50s. So this was just the last nail in the coffin. So again, this is the Eagle Air shaft. It was small. It was just to the left of that angle iron. It was just to the right of that angle iron there on the left and to the left of that angle iron there on the right. Pretty small dimensions. And again, this is backfilled. It only went down 50 feet. But the fact that this was such a tragic spot in 1866 and 1871, and this would ultimately become the salvation spot in 1959. That's good. I mean, at least this shaft gave some good karma at the end of its life. So by all means, come down here and check out the um, former Knox Coal Company site for yourself. It's a gorgeous site to behold. Thank you for watching.